Hi, I'm Adrian Foyle, and this is my wife, Connie Foyle, and we've been coming to church here for a little over three months, and uh, we were invited by a lady who Connie was doing a Bible study with. Um, I don't remember her name, but I'll, I'll let her take over. <laughs> you know, it's um, interesting how the Lord orchestrates people that come into your life and the events that happen around that. And we were at a point where we'd been doing church online because of COVID and knew that it was time to um, just get back into the physical church aspect to be able to do those ministries of serving and fellowshipping and having community. And the Lord had really laid that on our hearts. And as Adrian said, I was in a neighborhood Bible study and just have met the most wonderful mothers with young children. And I, my heart, I have just wanted to gather them under my wings and just really have relationship with them and they invited a couple of them come here and they invited us to come and honestly at first we were like or I was like mm, I don't know it's a younger crowd but then only as the Lord leads <laughs> and just let you know that that's something you need to try once I got past that my preconception I talked to Adrian about it we came and when we entered the church building, the door greeters were just so welcoming and very friendly. Walked in, there was somebody that came up and talked to us, and I told Adrian, I said, oh, we're not gonna be invisible here. And so that was really a nice thing. So you guys that are on that ministry team know that you have a very impactful <laughs> responsibility because that's one reason that we you know, wanted to come back because we knew that there was warmth here. Um, and then as we entered into the sanctuary, found our seats and Jimmy started the message, realized that he was in Revelation. And Revelation is, um, a big book of the Bible. And he even made the comment, he said, you know, I've pastored many years and I feel like I've just really been released to do this and to do it well. And so we are going through this together. And I thought, wow, most pastors wouldn't even attempt revelation. But then to stand before your flock and say, we're doing this together, um, that, that meant the world to me. And then as Jimmy went on, his passion and enthusiasm for Jesus was just splashing out. And fortunately, I got some of those drops on me and my joy bucket got filled. And I told Adrian, I said, we, I feel like this is where the Lord wants us. And we came week after week. And so we're here now. I do want to say that at the end of Jimmy's, one of his messages at the beginning, he said, um, do you do church? Do you just go to church or are you a part of a church? So, and that was early, that was in August. And so week after week, as we would come, I realized that, you know, doing church is totally different than being a part of the church. And I knew that before, I just didn't know if the connections were there, but they are. Um, I've been able to be a part of the Thursday Bible study, and that has just been such a blessing. Um, have met with some of the women outside of church for coffee, just trying to develop relationship. And, you know, we're encouraged that we know there is a place for us here that at our age, we do have something to share. Um, for the young ones, maybe that after 40, almost 43 years of marriage, as tough as it is, it's worth it's worth fighting for. And and we just want people to, to be blessed by our relationship with the Lord. Um, we are excited to move forward. We want to um, be a part of what's going on here. We want to serve. We want to have community and fellowship and ministry and you know, it's it's real and it's authentic. And I, I did want to say too that um, Sean, when he is singing, he literally rushes us into the presence of the Lord, into the throne room. That young man has a heart for Jesus and his spirit is pure and I just, I love him. And then when you get Shay into the mix, there is a, a dynamic team um, that is evident that's going on here. And, and you can feel that that's not always the case. Um, 
but here it is and it just makes us want to come back um, and do life with people here. So we're excited about how God is going to use us and what's around the corner for OPCC. Yeah, and <clears throat> what I really enjoy and what I liked when I first got here was uh, Jimmy's message. It was very educational. Uh, I grew up a Baptist preacher's kid um, all my life. Um, my father's 86 and he just retired last March. Um, and his message was very educational. You know, it was, it was like, wow, you know, I never thought of that. Or, you know, that's a great, he, he just brought, brings things out that you might not have thought of before. And uh, if anybody's ever read through the Bible, you could read the Bible a hundred times and come out with something different. You know, read a passage 10 times and have a, it come, you know, God brings out a different meaning to, to you. Um, you know, and I really enjoy that. You know, uh, it's not, it, I, I'm not bored when I come to church. You know, it's not, uh, uh, and, then, and then the music is, is very good. You know, growing up uh, in the old Baptist, you know, singing the old hymn, hymn songs, you know, I really missed that in other churches. You know, um, I, I like the modern music, but um, I enjoy the, the old hymns and, and they incorporate some of those old hymns into the, the worship service, and I really enjoy that. And, and uh, um, you know, I just I just have a good time when I come to church. You know, in, during during the service. Um, and then an, another thing that I really like is, you know, I, I'm I've gotten old, and you know, a lot of churches you go to, you either have older young people or there's a good mix of both here. You know, there's people here my age, and then there's young couples with small kids, and and uh, and, and they really all mesh together. And I, I've, you know, I feel like um, ever since I've been here that I fit in. You know, I fit in with everybody here. Everybody's so friendly, and and that's what I really, really uh, am excited about. You know, is making those new relationships and and finding people that I can relate to. Hi, I'm Curtis. I'm uh, new to OPCC. I think I started late August, early September. Um, and I found the church online. I was seeking a place that uh, spoke to me. I've um, driven by the church apparently hundreds of times not knowing it was there. So I wish the cross was there when I first drove by, but uh, it looks great now. Um, I went to a large mega church um, originally, and I just I felt alone. Um, I felt anonymity. I didn't feel fellowship, and maybe part of that is my problem. But there's a, you're you're never lonelier than when you're in a crowd. Um, and I just I didn't do what I needed to do, and I was looking for something smaller. Um, my background is a small church as a kid in Burlington. And uh, that's what I'm used to. That's what I enjoy. Um, just a fellowship with people and get to know people instead of just this mass of people. But I, during COVID, obviously we didn't go to the church. Uh, we were staying at, I was staying at home. And um, just looking for another church that spoke to me. And then I don't know how I discovered OPCC, but I did. And then I started um, downloading messages on uh, Spotify and uh, couldn't get enough. And what I liked about it is I, I, I heard in Jimmy the true word. I, I heard somebody that was unapologetic for it. He didn't water it down. And I, I think I knew it was the right place when I realized that I knew it was for me, but it hurt. It, I didn't want to hear that, but I knew I had to hear that. So there was a bit of a revulsion. You want, You know, you don't want to be accountable to yourself. You just want to float through life. And then what Jimmy was saying was, it was speaking to me. And I remember one of the things he said, um, I'm not going to be saying this verbatim, but basically if, you, if you're not here to seek God, worship God, and you're just here to play games, you might as well go home and enjoy your life. And that's how I feel. So I'm probably not doing him justice on those words, but you know, that, that was a, what he was getting at. And it hit me because I've always felt that way. I've seen a lot of people play church. I don't want to play church because frankly, I don't really like church. I, I want to play, I want life and I want something real and I want God. 
you know, I've been a, I've been a seeker all my life. And I tell people my story. You know, I've, you know, you've heard of the Israelites for 30 years. I've been in the wilderness, an urban wilderness, but a wilderness nonetheless. And I know I've always wanted him in my life, but from a distance. <laughs> I wanted him on my terms, and um, that's not how it works. And there's no fulfillment in that. There's no joy, and I, you know, I can't answer that. I don't think there's any salvation in that either. But um, so I was watching. I was actually listening to the podcast. wasn't watching on you know, online because I would take it to work and listen, and I was just gobbling it up. Um, couldn't get enough, and finally, I, you know, after I. Uh, was vaccinated and um, I had called Jimmy one night I was at you know I was at a point in my life where you know 40 years of adult doing the wrong thing just culminated in disaster and I didn't know where to go um, so I called anybody and everybody that would listen and that was pretty much nobody and then Jimmy uh, called me back and I just the floodgates came open and um, you know, I felt his concern and love, and it's good to have that. I, I realized in life, at least I can't, and I'm assuming nobody can, do it alone. Um, there needs to be fellowship, and that'll take me to what I like about this church when I did start attending. Um, people were very friendly. I, I like the small <laughs> group. I can manage people, and every everyone's reached out to me. The staff has reached out to me, but I've also reached to them, too, because I realize there's there's a, there's a part I have to play as well, which I've never done in the past. Um, to be a friend, you have to be a friend. <laughs> to have a friend, you have to be a friend. Uh, and um, to be a member of a church, you have to be a member. Uh, you got to do your part. Uh, you know, when I come to church, I haven't missed one. In fact, I, I've told people I, I can't miss one. I, it's weird, but I want to be here. It's like I can't wait for Sunday. I feel like I'm on the battlefield all week. And I'm crawling back to headquarters or something. Like I can't, you know. I I need some. I need a recharge. I need some encouragement um, because on my own, I can't. I can't generate that. Um, I feel weak, and this gives me strength. And it's just I love the music. The music makes me cry, but it lifts me up. I, I, I'm a crier. <laughs> Got that from my mom. But um, I love it, and, and I I want to. Be a part of it and do more and do my part. I don't know what that is yet. And I want to help others because I know I can. I've had, you know, 40 years of adult pain and suffering and I know what it's like. Um, and I know what it's like to lie to yourself your whole life, thinking you're going to achieve something on your own, but you're not. Um, the devil does put a lot of things out there that look good and they might even taste good, <laughs> but they don't last and they don't fulfill you. And that's why I'm here. I'm here for not the church itself, but the, you know, the fulfillment that God brings, not only with, with him saving me, but also with the fellowship he brings around me. And I love that. And, uh, and honestly, I, I can't do it any other way and, and make it through what's left of my life. But, um, and there's been times I don't wanna come in. I work, I work nights, so I'm dead tired at 9 in the morning, and uh, thank goodness for the coffee out in the lobby. <laughs> Let's continue that. That keeps me going, and uh, I bring my son every other week. I have him every other weekend, and he loves it. Uh, he's been to the mega church with all the stuff, which uh, I think stuff is not important. I think what's important is, is the Word and teaching them the Bible and even theology at that age, early age. I think kids don't get that anymore. I, I did. I walked away from it, but I, but I did get that. But you know what? I've come back to it. And I, I, I sent my mom a, getting ready to send her a Thanksgiving card. I just wrote it uh, 30 minutes ago and just said, Mom, thank you for... Uh... Well, first I said, sorry for being such a pain as a kid. And then I said, thank you for uh, teaching me right from wrong and teaching me that there's a God who loves and there's a God who saves. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, uh, I walked away from that for a long, long time. But one thing I learned is he's always there. He's never left. <laughs> and I think once you realize that, it changes your life. He doesn't leave you left. He's always been there. 
And that's, that's helped me. And coming to church reminds me of that. And other people um, living that way reminds me as well. So I, I love it. Um, can't get enough of it. <laughs> and I wish church was every day almost. I mean, it's like I was going through those podcasts and it's like, I'm running out. Jimmy's going to have to come up with something <laughs> new. <laughs> or I'm going to have to go to another church. I, I don't know what to do here. But I, but uh, yeah, I just, I just, I love it. Uh, I want to meet more people. I haven't met everybody. I sit back in the back. So that's my location if you want to come and say hi. I'm kind of an introvert, but a uh, crying introvert. So it's hard to carry on a conversation with somebody like that. But I'm, I'm more open than I've ever been. But man, it, it has changed my life. Um, I, I say that I reached out, but really God reached out to me. And he, he literally, he literally took my hand. <laughs> I didn't deserve it. But, but I, you know, forever grateful that he did. And I'm not going to let go. Because I, you know, I, my favorite verse, at least at this point, is, uh, I can't, I don't remember, it's, it's Peter, First Peter, but it's, um, I think it was First Peter. No, it has to be one of the Gospels, I'm sorry. Uh, Jesus is... Yeah, I guess all the, the crowds left, and Jesus asked his disciples, well, are you going to leave me too? And Peter's, Peter's like, well, where will I go? Where do I go for eternal life? Where do I go for this life? <laughs> Let alone eternal life, and that, that hit me. It's like, where do I go? I have nowhere else to go. So that's where I'm at. But, you know, I, I'm heading there. And I know God's leading me, so that's, I don't know how you could, I, I can't think of a better place to be. And uh, part of that is here at uh, OPCC. And uh, thank you for listening. So my name's Sean, and I have the honor and the pleasure of getting to be uh, the worship pastor for Overland Park Community Church. Um, it has been a pretty, wild ride, lots of ups and downs that have brought me to this point. Uh, and I could probably spend about three and a half hours telling that story and have before, but don't worry, this will not be a three and a half hour video. Um, <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to grow up in a, a, a Christian home with parents that thought it was valuable for uh, us kids to be to be in church uh, and I was fortunate enough that when they realized the church we were at wasn't incredibly healthy they sought one out that did seem healthy um, and and was um, for a time and and I experienced a lot of um, a lot of growth a lot of trials at that church when I was um, when I was about 14 years old um, I had a, an encounter with the Holy Spirit um, where he um, called and anointed me um, to lead worship and to write songs. Um, and it was an extremely powerful experience that I will never forget. Um, and and it, evol it, it involved him calling me even though I was highly unequipped. Um, I couldn't sing. I was a terrible vocalist. Um, and uh, I knew nothing about ministry or the theology behind worship. Um, and so uh, it was it was a rough trial. Um, and the Lord really used that, I think, to humble me and to teach me what dependence on Him looked like. Um, as years went by, uh, through His grace, um, I was able to grow musically and grow spiritually. Um, but but as I became a teenager, uh, some things some things got tough there, and I got burnt. Uh, a good bit by by the church um, and and in ministry uh, and while I was taught a lot of right answers and pretty much all of my belief system was biblically correct I was not given a biblical foundation um, with which to uh, to prove and explain that faith to others um, and and to prove and explain that faith to myself. And so as time went by, uh, as most of our stories probably go, I got into my 20s and I didn't, have, I didn't have a crisis of faith. I never once wavered in my 
belief in who God was and who Christ was and, and the role that the Word was in my life. Um, but I had uh, crises of uh, just emotional destruction that I created for myself by not abiding closely and listening to the Lord and got hurt time and time again um, by the music industry, by um, uh, a young woman or two, and uh, it really sent me spiraling. It sent me reeling, searching for answers. Um, and while I uh, didn't want to be in darkness the, the whole time, I was crying out to the Lord, where are you? I could not wake my spirit up out of this slumber. Um, the one thing that I clung to was A, the cross and Christ crucified, and, and B, uh, my calling and anointing to do ministry. And so even while I was struggling um, and, and in darkness, I, I continued um, to press through in ministry. Um, God was gracious enough to use my efforts in spite of my heart. Um, I was not the person on stage or off stage that, that uh, I think people imagined I was on stage, um, which caused me to spiral farther. Um, I wound up at a, at a church here in Kansas City, um, and uh, it, was, it was also a trial. It was what I would call the wilderness. Um, and in that time, the Lord did an amazing work. Um, I, I met a young woman who eventually would become uh, my wife, and she did not know Jesus, uh, or she knew a very different Jesus than I knew. And uh, God in his kindness and his grace um, allowed me the privilege to uh, be a vessel to introduce his mercy to someone that, that was searching for it ardently. Um, and so it turns out through this whole process, through this whole um, experience of struggle and darkness and distance and crying out to the Lord and wanting to be close to him but not being able to draw close, God, where are you? He so mercifully um, showed me what I was missing. It's sort of like you go your whole life and you're having these headaches or these stomach aches and something's wrong and you can't figure it out and you've tried medicine and you've tried all these different things and it turns out you're like allergic to corn or something and you had no idea. It was, it was, very similar because it was so simple. I didn't have the word active and living in my life. It was not my source of daily bread. It was not uh, my guiding light. I was not abiding. And so through this process, uh, my best friend Corey wound up at this church called OPCC. And he wound up there um, really out of an employment opportunity, honestly, but I watched it start to change his life. And through uh, throughout our friendship, I had never seen this version of Corey. Um, and so I knew something was going on. And eventually he invited me into this discipleship thing he was starting. And I said no. And I said no for like a year because I was arrogant and I had been uh, tracking in church culture and in ministry longer and deeper than he had. And I thought, you know, what, what am I going to learn? And boy, did God have a surprise for me. Um, it turned me upside down. Um, the Lord used that discipleship time and experience to um, help get me through uh, the wilderness that I was in and uh, to help refine me into someone who could possibly resemble what a husband should be uh, for my future wife. Um, and so in studying the Old Testament and getting into the Word, the Lord showed me that um, there's this process that He brings us through when we look at the Israelites when they were in captivity in Egypt. We have captivity, we have exodus, we have wilderness, we have promised land. When we're in captivity, um, we are a slave to sin. We are a slave to fear. Um, we are a slave to our own selfish desires. Um, and to leave captivity is scary. It is difficult. It takes boldness. It takes faith. 
It takes believing that God will um, part the seas, that God will um, uh, affect Pharaoh's heart, right? Um, and so that leads us to Exodus. And, and Exodus is that point of action where, where we actually <laughs> confront that captivity and we go. And, and for me, the captivity was darkness. For my wife, the captivity was um, the previous belief system uh, that, that she needed help to be let out of, um, which was which led us into that exodus. It was the exodus that God used to wake up my heart. Um, it was the wilderness that God used to uh, to refine out the selfishness and the impurities and the things that don't belong in the promised land. Um, and and finally, after four years of of struggle and of long suffering and of opportunity to build character, um, the Lord brought me into the promised land, which was OPCC. <laughs> uh, in this season of my life, obviously not in the long scheme of things, but right here, terrestrially speaking. Um, it has been amazing to go from close to 15 years of searching for a church community where people are honest about their sin, uh, about their struggles, where the leadership is willing to hear that without recoiling in horror, but instead to embrace in compassion um, and to show the power and the authority of the word. Um, I have been so encouraged. Um, I have been so encouraged by a community that seeks transformation. This church could not care less about numbers, they could not care less about um, uh, about impressing anyone, um, but what they care about is is God's people and seeing them transformed. Um, I utterly appreciate um, just how welcome I feel here. Uh, you would think that as someone who's been in ministry and leading worship for um, I gotta do the math, this is scary. Close to 20 years? Uh, I've never felt such a part, such a part of a community. Um, people so willing to just welcome me into their homes and into their lives. Um, and what I am excited about is um, I have been a part of church communities during all different phases of um, of growth and transformation. I've been a part of churches that were right on the precipice of explosion and growth. I've been a part, which I call the golden years, you know? Um, I've been a part of communities that were um, plateaued and stuck. And I've been a part of communities that were atrophying and tapering off. Um, and I can tell you that this is a community that is right on the verge of something breathtaking. Um, and. I am encouraged by the new faces that I see every week that introduce themselves, that smile, that stick around, and that are willing to give us the honor of letting us into their lives. Um, so that's my story at about 30,000 feet. And if anyone wants to hear the three and a half hour version, um, let's get dinner sometime. Love you guys.